Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jimmy. Thank you so much for watching today's photography topic and that is five things I kind of wasted money on. Five things I purchased in my photography career that I shouldn't have. Number one, Nissan i40 flash. Number two, professional studio lighting. Number four, Adobe editing suite. Number five, Fujifilm 10 to 24 millimeter lens. Where's number three? I don't know. Whoops. So this is all just my opinion. It's just for fun. So relax if you're into these things. Um, it's just, you know, if you're just starting out with photography, just kind of watch out for these things. The temptation to buy everything is uh, very strong. <laughs> so let's get started with number one. So the first thing that's on my list of things I shouldn't have purchased, things that were kind of a waste of money for me, is the Nissan i40. And this is a small little flash here. It's a mini size flash that fits my X-T2 really well. In fact, I bought this when I had my X-T1 and X-E2. So this is pretty old and still in brand new condition. You know why? I've only used it maybe a few times in experimentation, but the learning curve and you know the dials in the back, while simple, in looks it was just more for me to learn it's another excuse for me not to get started shooting so I kind of just put it to the side and said you know what I'll get to it when I get to it and years pass and it's just been sitting there collecting dust should I have sold it yeah but you know what's worse <laughs> what wastes more money than buying something you don't need buying something you don't need selling it and buying it again later Ugh, who hasn't done that you know what's worse than spending money on a flash brand new that you don't really use? Buying two flashes. <laughs> it was a long time ago, okay? I haven't done this since. I don't have three flashes lying around. I have two. Now, some of you might be going, well, what about the flash that comes with the X-T2 or the X-T1? Why can't you just use that? Well, if you've used those and used these, you would know that they're not quite the same. These are more... Um, adjustable you can turn them in different angles you can have them bounce off different areas you can use a remote and have it fire remotely um, so there's more versatility when it comes to a strobe like this it's just you know some people um, use it for nighttime which is my goal you can use it as a fill light during the day but you can also buy stuff like this you know cheap lights that have batteries in them that can serve its purpose just fine but this is strictly just for photography and uh, other creative uses, which I'm just not there yet. I'm not prepared to learn more, which will stop me from taking more pictures, which is the main goal. I haven't even mastered what I have. I don't even know what I was thinking buying more stuff. Anyway, that's kind of the whole purpose of this video. What else did I buy that I didn't need? Number two. So another thing that I almost purchased that probably would have been a big waste of money for me are these huge, nice looking studio lights. And I'm talking about ones that stay on for the sake of videography. And you can use them in photography as well. But when I see other YouTubers using them, man, I just want to run my credit card up and buy those things. I know they're very expensive. And I know you guys see other people getting nice gear and feel that pull to buy something, um, maybe to make yourself feel better for being such a terrible photographer. <laughs> but it's, um, you know, the temptation is real. We think that if we buy something else, it will make us better in some regard. Um, and I did give in, almost given a few times, but in my heart, I knew that the stuff I was using is fine for now. I haven't mastered what I have when it comes to these lights even. Yes, lighting is not just some technique. People spend their lives studying lighting and I haven't even begun to scratch the surface when it comes to lighting. Um, I know that because even with this YouTube channel, if you, which I don't recommend doing this by the way, looking at my other YouTube videos, the lighting changes every video because it's not consistent. I want to be able to see what I'm doing and how to change things to the way that's most um, appealing to the viewer and make it easier on me in editing. And I'm getting better with it. And uh, that's how I know I don't need new stuff because I'm able to change what I have to be better without upgrading the stuff, which means what? It's the skill level that needs to change. It's my ability to adapt to what I have and learn how can I use what I have 
and get better with this because buying new, better, expensive lights would be lost on me. So while I have avoided that bullet for now, um, it would have been a big waste of money. Okay, so number four on my list of things I shouldn't have purchased, of course, looking back on it, hindsight's 2020. I only know that from trying this out, Adobe Suite. Uh, for years, I loved Adobe Camera Raw, Adobe Bridge, my, was part of my workflow, and uh, Adobe Lightroom. Many of you guys are huge Lightroom Photoshop people as well. Uh, and uh, After years of being so scared to edit on my computer, I loved learning and being proficient with Lightroom and Adobe Suite. But since changing to their monthly subscription, it's just turned me off as a client or a customer and I have since looked for other options. I know many of you guys out there can relate and have since left Adobe Suite altogether like me. I am now using Pixelmator Pro and if you're not going to use that, there are many other free versions and other paid versions that you can buy to help you manipulate your RAWs into stunning JPEGs um, for portraits or whatever type of photography you're into. So Adobe Suite, while it's not going to break the bank when it comes to um, paying for these subscriptions, it's just another expense that you don't need to make because there are other programs that do just as well now that don't make you pay a monthly subscription. That's what's so painful about it. Um, so I recommend Pixelmator Pro. There's just so many easy ways to use it for whatever level you're at. And every time I use it, I find another cool little Easter egg nugget that you can use in that program. Um, that just If you dig deeper and deeper, it just gets more, not advanced, but uh, more interesting finds. And you can say, oh, I could use that to make this cool picture, or make this happen, put this little cool graphic on there. And it's a very nice interface. So I recommend checking out what other alternatives there are. Type in Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom alternative in Google and see what comes up and look up for reviews. Okay, so number five on my list of things I should not have purchased is an actual lens. This is the 10 to 24 millimeter lens, and I'm not saying it's a bad lens. Like I said, this is my opinion. The 10 to 24 millimeter lens does not fit my life and has not fit my life for a while. I've taken several great pictures with this lens, but it's not something I grab for all the time. And um, it's just very bulky, very heavy. It was very expensive for my budget. And the reason why I purchased it was because a lot of photographers I admired in the Fuji line were taking grand landscapes and I want to be like them. So I kind of found out that they're using wide angle lenses. Um, so I went ahead and bought it and I thought I would be like them. It doesn't quite work like that, does it? How many times are we going to make this mistake? You have to be able to use what you have at first at your disposal, master that and move on. And I just had too many toys and I still do. And this one just kind of gets neglected if I'm telling the truth. Um, maybe I'll hang on to it and use it at a later date, but I'm just having too much fun with my smaller lenses right now. The 35 millimeter prime, for example, uh, the 85 millimeter prime is a great lens. Uh, pretty much makes anything look nice. This one's a very specialized lens that I can't make things look great at will. I really, I feel like I have to be in a certain situation to make this lens shine. Um, also, it's a little distortion -y if you take it to the wrong areas and the wrong places. And people say, well, you can just use this lens and correct the distortion later in Lightroom or when you're editing and change the profile. And while that's true, you can edit out the distortion, but that's part of the character with this lens. So I tend not to do that. Um, yeah, so if I could do it over again, I wouldn't get this lens at this time. I probably would get a smaller, more travel-friendly prime lens. Anyway, those are my five things. I hope that you enjoyed my stories here. Uh, let me know what things you have purchased that maybe you would have held off on uh, if you had known better. All right, guys. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.